Welcome back, everyone, to a Monday edition of Double Jab Radio. We are live inside the Journeyman Boxing Studios. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. Check us out online, journeymanboxing.com. Follow me on Twitter, RichQ on Q, as we continue to talk a little boxing on this Monday. Antonio Nieves, 27-year-old, undefeated super bantamweight from Cleveland, Ohio, doing some great things in and outside the ring. I know he just got done training, but he's kind enough to join us for a couple moments to talk about his most recent win. And Antonio, first and foremost, I appreciate you jumping on board for a couple of minutes. Not a problem, buddy, not a problem. Well, it's good to catch up with you, and I know when we spoke, I think you were probably, I want to say maybe five or six fights in, and uh, obviously you're 10 or no, so you haven't lost, but uh, you've been on a nice little run of late against Lopez and Fuentes, and then you just handled uh, uh, Dwayne Wisdom in early December, but I know when we spoke the, the, the last time, you told me you you understood that at your age, 27 years of age, you, you wanted to be active. You wanted to have a active 2014. That's exactly what you did. You got in five fights, all wins, and you kind of stepped up in your uh, opposition as well. Talk a little bit about 2014 and, and what has that meant to you going forward? Well, 2014, it was a, it was a great year. You know, we stayed busy just like I wanted to. Um, we faced a couple of different opponents that that just, you know, every fight I learned something. And I just, overall, it was a great year, you know, and we stayed busy like I wanted to, and then it was great. How about the fact that when you look at a last, uh, maybe your last three opponents, I mean, Wisdom obviously had the lopsided record, and you really took care of them. And I know you throw records out the window. You dropped them four times in that one, I believe. But you fought Justin Lopez. You dropped him in the second round. You won on the scorecards. And you took care of Fuentes, who was 5-5. Five and five. Lopez was 5-0. and oh. And then you fought a 24-fight veteran in Wisdom, as I alluded to. So it seems as though, forget about you know those first couple fights in, in a young fighter's career, where they're getting the guys who are maybe one and one, two and zero, oh, two and one, zero oh and one, zero oh and two. You've stepped up a little bit. So, with that being said, what have you taken away from your last three fights? You know what? Ever since we, ever since I turned pro, we always, we always wanted to to fight guys that I would learn from. You know, we didn't want to fight those zero and five guys that we went in there and blew them out and then learned nothing. Our whole, our whole process was every fight, fight somebody better, learn something from each fight to keep growing. And like when I fought when I fought um Lopez, he was five and oh, you know, that was a step up. And then fighting fighting somebody like uh Pointez that was five and five that's been there and then back to fighting with him, which I actually fought my pro debut. But he went on fighting a whole bunch of times. So, uh I don't know, every every time we we wanna fight somebody that, you know, that's gonna give me something a better look and then give me give me uh something new to learn so we don't want to just fight those easy guys so we want we want to keep learning and keep growing there's, there's no really no point of fighting guys that you're not going to learn from when, when it really counts that's when that's when we really have it how about this step up from four rounders to six rounders? I know, again, when we spoke a couple months ago, you said conditioning was never going to be an issue because you're a gym rat. Um, but w w is, is there a difference in your mind with those last two rounds? I mean, obviously, if you're winning uh, unanimous decisions and you're taking care of business, that's one thing. But if it's a, if it's a closer fight, so to speak, then, then maybe you, you need some gas left in the tank for rounds five and six. But have you seen the difference between a four and six rounder yet? Uh, not really. The first time the first time I fought a six rounder, and that once we got to the fourth round, and uh, I was there, I'm thinking, oh, wait, I still got two rounds left. <laughs> but after that, after that, you know, after that, you know, nothing is, is really nothing, you know, because like I said, I'm always in the gym. I'm always, I'm always ready to go. So six rounds, it hasn't really been nothing, hasn't been nothing to, not really a big change to me. Um, hopefully my next fight, it's one of the last, either the one more six round or possibly the last six round that we're going to do, uh, to move up to eight because, um, I'm really doing six easy. Like I'm not, I'm not really feeling the fatigue or anything like that. So, so. You know, so, so far to me, the six rounds are good. They they haven't given me no, no trouble. The world was in shape, so really doesn't doesn't show anything. 
Again, another edition of Double Drive Radio inside the Journeyman Boxing Studios. I'm your host, Rich Quinones. Antonio Nieves joining us for a couple moments. 10 and 0, native of Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, I'm sure he's enjoying the snow right about now as the Northeast is getting slammed. Uh, I want to go back to, again, uh, the conversation we initially had. You, you told me that, you know, it's great. You got a couple knockouts early in your own career. I believe the first three out of six pro fights, or I should actually say four out of seven, you were knocking out guys. Now, some of the fights have gone to the scorecards. We all know the old adage is you go looking for the knockout, you're not going to get it. Um, I, I would believe, and I don't want to speak for you, I would believe that having some of these fights go to the scorecard is forcing you to box, and if you need to bang, you bang. But it's also teaching you how to become a smart fighter would, and pick and choose your spots, um, whatever the opponent gives you. Is that what you've noticed over these last three or four fights? Yeah, going into the going into the fight, we never look for the knockout. We always we always prefer, you know, let's box and if the knockout comes, the knockout comes. But there there is fights that, you know, like you said, I have to pick my shots, I have to to make sure I'm doing things right because the guys are doable, the guys are lasting, they could take punches. So it, it just it gives you that it gives you that, that that mindset of you know I gotta be patient. Let's not let's not get wild. Let's Let's box that we're supposed to box, and you know if the knockout comes, great. But if it doesn't, let's win. Let's win the the round. So it gives you that that patience. You know, you learn. We have to learn how to be patient in there, because you know some guys are gonna take those those, those your best shots, and they're gonna keep coming. So it just going the distance just teaches you how to you know be patient, and you know if if plan A, plan A, the knockout doesn't come, well you got plan B. You know, you keep boxing. I want to step outside the ring for a moment because I know uh, there was a good article, a real nice article written uh, about you in the uh, Cleveland papers about a month or so ago. And, and maybe a lot of people who are listening uh, worldwide on journeymanboxing.com don't know uh, what you do as far as a nine to five, even though you are considered a full time fighter, but you work in a bank. Uh, during the day and and I gotta ask you a how are you able to kind of balance work in 40 you know 35 40 plus hours and then getting your training and because to me that tells me that you're very serious and you're taking your craft very serious but how about trying to find that balance act you know I'm, I'm so used to it that I really don't notice you know I already got a, a plan schedule you know wake up early before work I start work at 8 o'clock I wake up before that my mouth in, come home, get ready, go to, uh, get dressed, go to work. After work, I've um, got my stuff, and I go, I hit, I hit the gym. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that it's, it's really not, you know, it's just part of the part of the day. You know, it's, it's natural to me, so, I don't know. Every time I get a day off, it's like, well, what am I going to do with my time? Because I'm not too sure, you know, it just throws off the, my schedule. <laughs> I'm sure. um, yeah, I mean, I'm used to it. I mean, I, I like working. Uh, it gives me something to do. Um, there's times that I do, I gotta do two days and we get them done early in the morning so I gotta go to work. I'm curious, when you leave, does anyone, when you go to the gym or something and someone meets you for the first time and maybe wonders why you're there early, does anyone ever make a joke, hey, what do you have, banker hours? <laughs> right, yeah. You know, the guys in the gym, they all know. So they, you know, they throw jokes at it like, are you going to be at work here in a little bit? It's like, yeah, I'm getting ready to go in a little bit. I won't make it on time, no work. But um, the good thing is, that, um, I've been blessed to have a, a manager, a manager that, you know, he knows that, uh, that boxing is what I want to do. He knows that's my career, so he always works, he always works around. He always works around the schedule if I need anything off, you know, besides the fact that I get vacation days, but say if I, if I go to my vacation that he always finds a way to get me the days or the hours that I need for my fire and for my training. So I've been blessed with, with having a manager that understands that, you know, I'm working on two careers, you know, trying to, trying to become a world champion and, and have a career for after, after I retire. Well, that, that's smart. That's uh, educated thinking going forward. I want to ask you this, though. Right now, presently, now you'll fight at 118. Will you, you, you'll, you'll fight as high as 126 as well. So you'll, you'll, you'll fight Bantam, Super, and Featherweight? Or what, what's, what's, what's your natural weight? Well, I've been fighting at 122, but our next fight, I'm, I'm shooting down to 18. 118, that's, that's the actual the weight that we won the campaign at, 118. Um, I walk around about a 
Well, the one thing is, a lot of those divisions, you you don't need 20 or so fights in your career, realistically, to have a shot at the table uh, uh, the, 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 as you go down and wait with some of those divisions. So, uh, again, that, that, that could possibly be the thinking going forward. I was going to say, with all the snow up in Ohio, you probably need a couple extra pounds to keep you warm. So you might you might want to stay 122 for a little bit, 118. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, before I let you get out of here, is there a tentative date uh, scheduled for your your next fight? Are we looking sometime maybe in March, in the spring? Is is, is there, I mean, I, I, if, look, I understand if nothing's written in stone, you can't divulge that information. But is there is there a timetable? And then ideally, how many fights? I mean, and I kind of know the answer. It's a foolish question. I'm sure you're going to say as many as possible. But realistically, in a perfect world, how many fights would you like to get in 2015? Honestly, I want to get, uh, like, at least five. Like, I did in 2014. I want to get at least five. And before I let you... Yeah, right, exactly. Before I let you get out of here, um, again, always appreciate the time. If you want to plug anything... Uh, you're dealing with social media. Um, if anyone wants to follow you on a Facebook or Instagram or, or Twitter, um, you can uh, certainly uh, plug that out. Yeah, everybody good. You know, follow me at um, on Facebook is it's Antonio Carita Nieves. Um, on Instagram is uh, Antonio underscore Nieves underscore 216. And then Twitter is Antonio Nieves 10. So make sure you guys follow me. Listen, always good to catch up with you. Gracias por tu tiempo. Stay warm in Ohio, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again uh, after your next bout. Not a problem, buddy. Thank you for having me. So there you have it, Antonio Nieves joining us for another edition of Double Jab Radio Inside the Journeyman Boxing Studios. And it looks like that fight is going to be right around the corner for Antonio, which is interesting because the one thing I took away is, you know, he understands that he's he's in that, that age right now where he's 27 years of age and he's been very active in 2014 he wants to keep that momentum going and i personally believe when you really look at it in that division super bantamweight division if he can drop a little more weight as we talked about i mean you, you have guys in there adam lopez daniel roman manuel Avila, Ro, roman morales joseph diaz uh keep an eye out for this kid antonio nieves from cleveland ohio i'm telling you right now he's gonna make some noise going forward so Good edition of Double Job Radio in the books. As we close it out here on a Monday, as always, thank you to our sponsors of today's broadcast. Gracias por su tiempo. Casanova Boxing Gloves. Check them out online. Victory Boxing Gym in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And of course, the Atlantic City Pal in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Check them out online as well. The Atlantic City Pal, always making a difference. Everyone have a good Monday night. Todo el mundo tiene un buen lunes. And for our friends in Spain and Latin America, tuning in online at journeymanboxing.com. As always, oh, mercy nosotros amigos en España y América Latino. Gracias por tu tiempo. Thank you for your time. También. All right. Don't forget, as always, it's not the destination, but it's the journey. So enjoy it. Please check us out online on journeymanboxing.com. Follow me on Twitter, RichQ on Q. Have a good Monday night. We'll talk to you Tuesday. As always, we'll see you next time. Ringside. For another edition.